What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing The Last of Us Episode 2. I'm uploading this pretty late. I don't know what time this is going to go up. This might go up by like 10 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock. Uh, I would, the episodes come out on Sunday, but my work schedule has kind of changed around on Monday. So I won't be able to upload th uh, these re review ep uh, reviews of these episodes and anything else until like late Monday. So just so y'all know, always expect these Monday nights from now on. All right, so episode two. So let me just start out by saying the best part of The Last of Us show so far has been the opening. It's been the intros with these fungi uh, experts talking about the cordyceps um, and just giving exposition, adding to the lore, um, adding to the, 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 the context and giving more content regarding the origin of the cordyceps and the, and the pandemic, you know, stuff about patient zero and exactly what caused, uh, you know, the pandemic and, and this, uh, this infection and how it spread and all this like just exposition that I wanted the game to explore in some way, the show is doing that. So as someone who played the game, like all of us, and we know a lot of the stuff to expect. The most exciting stuff has really been the new stuff that wasn't in the game. And the performances in these openings and these intros have been amazing. In the first episode, we had the, I don't know the, the actor's name, um, but he was in The Mummy, of course. And, uh, you know, him, he's, a, he's, a, he's an expert on fungus, talking about how the fungus can't uh, survive in humans. But if it did, it would be a wrap for us. It would be donezo. And just the way they deliver the lines and, and the tone of how serious it is and how absolute. And and th there's just this, there's, there's just this messaging in each of the openings that if this were to ever happen, it's over. And that was like emphasized in this second episode at the opening so we st we were in jakarta it opens up in jakarta uh, indonesia which by the way is a little bit different um from the game because in in the game uh this infection you know it, it originated in the in in south america uh jakarta Ind indonesia is in like southeast asia or something like that i'm not great at geography but i know that you know i know that's not where that is right so this is in southeast uh, uh, Asia, right, in 2003, and military officials come and find this woman who's just eating lunch or or dinner, and they take her to these labs and they have her have her look look at some fungus. And her name is, I think it was uh, Ibu Ratna, and she's the professor of mycology at a university. Uh, mycology is the study of of fungus, um, so she's an expert. She knows everything about it. She studied it her her whole life. Right. And she stole the episode and this part, this intro just set the tone of the whole episode. Right. So, you know, she's looking at this fungus and um, through through a microscope and, you know, she's she tells this official, listen, cordyceps cannot survive in humans, but they tell her they got this sample from a human. And there's just this even though I'm, I'm the person who, you know, says music is not important in games. I think music music is important in other mediums like like movies and, and TV shows. And they just play this music of impending absolute doom. And it just it's this this scene is just absolute like perfection. Right. So they take her to this body um, that they were speaking about. And she does her examination and she like cuts into the corpse and, um, you know, she pulls out tendrils out, out the mouth and there's fungus inside the corpse. Um, and, and like you could see you could see it moving. Uh, because this fungus is like very much alive because, you know, that's how it controls uh, its its host. Um, you know, its goal is to spread and, and devour a, as much as it can. And so it, and this is this is some people are really uh, amazing because there was a last there was a fan theory last week that people think that the infection, the spores and everything and the fungus spread through flour because in the last episode, Joel and his family, they were like avoiding uh, eating flour, not intentionally, but there was like a, I think there was like a flour shortage and they couldn't really, uh, they just happened not to eat anything with, with flour in it. Um, 
And what's interesting is this woman, this this uh, expert on mycology, stated that flour is a well. The the man told him, the official told him that told her that the incident happened at a flour and grain factory 30 hours prior, right? And so, which proved the, the theory about the, the flour, right? And I think Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann had, had confirmed it um, right after this episode came out. And she said flour is a great, a great substrate, um, meaning that it's like the perfect material for organisms to live and grow. So makes it makes a lot of sense you know flour and grain factory it's spread through flour flour and grain um and yeah things can live in in in, in flour and grain um so the story so the story was he explains that a woman attacked four co-workers the police came and, and shot her and they eventually had to execute the four co-workers that that woman bit now the woman now, so so the, this professor asks, okay, who bit her? They don't know who who bit her, so they don't know the patient zero that bit her. And she asks, where are the other fourteen workers that were at that at, at, at this uh, at this factory? And they say they don't know. And at, at this point, this lady gives just gives up all hope is lost dude is asking her about vaccines and cures he's she's like my boy listen listen to me real quick we're done it's over pack it up we are going to die there is no hope you gotta understand like this this is this is insane you gotta she hasn't seen anything right like society is still perfectly functioning at this point right it's not like she jumped 20 years in the future and see and saw what it became she knew what was going to happen. He told her these details that this this fu this fungus has started to infect humans and and a few people who are infected are loose. Everything is still technically fine right now. Nothing has happened. And she said, "Dog, we are done. Start dropping bombs. Go see I want to go see my family." I want to go spend, you know, my last few hours or days or however long we got until this infection spreads and packs us all up in a blunt. She said we are literally down 40 points in the first half. The other team is going crazy dropping threes from the logo. We got, yo, we got their benches crazy. They got a they got a, like a a coach that got like already four titles under his belt. We got nobody on our side, bro. We, we, we got bums from the G League. We cannot come back from this. Pack it up. That's literally what she said, dog. Like, you know how terrifying that, that has to be? She There was nothing but fear in her. And she she acted her ass off. She had There was nothing but fear, bro. This scene was, was insane. Like, you got to think about that, how, how crazy... It, it has to be to to know that things are fine, but based on some details that somebody tells you, you know it's over. Like society as we know it are done. Like that's that's another level of fear and, and terrifying to just give up all hope. Just that quick, just from some details. So this scene was just it was just amazing. Um she just wants she knew she was gonna die and she's she already accepted it that quick. She just said, Yeah, I wanna go just, just go spend time with my family. We're gonna die. Just she's accepted it that quickly, and that's insane. Um so now they, you know, after the after the intro of the show, pick up from the last episode with Joel and Tess. Uh, of course, they found out Ellie is infected. Um, and of course they don't, you know, they still don't trust her, especially Joel. Joel, you know, doesn't he doesn't believe she's actually immune yet. Um, he thinks he, she's, he still thinks Ellie is going to turn eventually. So he's still on edge. He's still, you know, aiming the gun at her. He doesn't want any, you know, her, uh, Ellie anywhere close. And one of the lines, um, you know, through this dialogue, uh, that Tess says to Ellie is that her and Joel are not good people and people need to remember that we, and it's not about 
them necessarily being bad people but they're not good people either and that's that's a something that we learn through playing the game that some people don't want to accept they don't want to accept that joel is not a good person he's not a good person in the game he's not a good person in the show because it, it should be that way that continuity his character should be consistent because consistent he's not a good person i'm not gonna say he's a bad person i got reason to to you know i got reason that i could debate that he's a bad person but he's a survivor and that's what it is survivors are neither good nor bad but they're not good and y'all gotta stop looking at joel like some type of protagonist savior so i like that Tess pointed pointed that out in this situation um so and and ellie tells you know Tess that marlene wants to get her to doctors that's what this is all about doctors west uh at some hospital we, which we know uh is the hot saint mary's hospital um where you know jerry our abby's father is at with, at the, with the fireflies they're working on a cure or vaccine um and joel is pretty jaded about that he's like yeah i've heard this already blah 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 vaccine cure yeah you know i imagine through those 20 that 20 year gap there's been talks of like vaccines and cures for a very long time and people uh probably have accepted there's no such thing now there's always especially when we got to the last was part two right there's been debate about um whether the doctors would have ever been able to find a cure right if joel didn't do what he did and i you know i've always said joel is 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 a is a meathead and a jerk and a selfish prick because even if th there were doubts I, you still shouldn't have done what you did but in the intro hearing this expert of mycology say that there is no hope for no vaccine or or cure unfortunately you know that that might lend to uh the the the, the favor and the point of like some people saying that a cure uh wouldn't have worked anyway so it's okay that joel saved ellie and took away her her choice but it is possible in those 20 years that um i mean for one thing they discovered somebody who's immune which is ellie so that's a major that's a that, that's a major uh new thing so and in those 20 years those doctors like jerry uh jerry and, and and the rest of the doctors that he worked with could have discovered something else and the fact that ellie's immune um you know they could have studied her brain and gotten a cure from that so i just want to point that out um okay so ellie you know so they start they decide they got to move uh they got to keep going um ellie wants a gun and she makes a joke about throwing a sandwich at the infected if she runs in into one and i thought that was a missed opportunity to say uh you know um throw a brick or a glass which obviously would have been would, would would be alluding to you know throwing bricks and glasses in the game i thought that would have been a really cool easter egg and this this episode got some other easter eggs in it i thought that was a missed opportunity um so they go outside and this is our first time really seeing them outside in the open environment and it looks really good you could see where the budget went but at the same time it kind of looked artificial and static you know what i'm saying like the scenes especially in the distance everything looks like it's com completely stiff it doesn't the the world d doesn't really look alive it it looked artificial like a set designer put it together you get what i'm saying it just didn't look alive it does it do didn't look bad but it looked very artificial like yes it clearly looked like somebody placed this design piece here and this is here and like nothing's like moving that was just my only criticism of how things look but it still looked good um so they're moving they're moving um you know ellie and tess are talking you know ellie lies about being in the mall uh with riley um she you know because tess asked her uh you know how did she get bit we know we all know from the left the left behind um you know ellie got bit um and everything like that so did riley riley died we never got to see riley die by the way um but we know she's dead and um ellie you know ellie survived but she didn't want to mention she was in a mall with riley um also while they're walking ellie alludes to super infected because ellie, even though she's never been outside like the quarantine zone she uh she's 
still hears about things. She still goes to school and, you know, interacts with people. So she brings up, uh, she's, her, you know, um, super infected that explode fungus spores, um, which is the bloater, as we know, and uh, split uh, and, and infected with split heads that see in the dark like bats, which are clickers, as we as we know. And when she mentions the, you know, the clickers, she doesn't call them that. But when she mentions them, they kind of, you know, uh, Tess and, and Joe, like, kind of look at each other and, you know, they they pause for a sec a second because obviously they're not, they know those are real. Those are clicker. But when she met, when Ellie mentions, you know, the bloaters, essentially, it's like they don't know that exists yet. Right, because Tess is like, "Oh, I hope those aren't, those aren't real," and Joel doesn't really react to that. So I'm like, "Do they not know about bloater uh, about bloaters yet? Are they unaware of bloaters at this point?" Because in the in the game, I don't think I don't I, I don't think that was first the first time Joel has seen a bloater. Like when they were in the gym, I think he he knows about bloaters, and um. And Joel has said in this episode, he said he's killed a lot of, of infected. So so I find that I feel like he should be like more, um, I guess, knowledge, knowledgeable of them. But at a, at a future scene and, I, and I'll talk about it when I when I get there. Right. But so here's here's something that they that they have did right with this episode. They've like mixed in the hotel scene and the abandoned building and museum scene because the hotel scene comes way comes like kind of way later right um that's like the scene where everybody saw in the e3 the original e3 trailer for the last of us so that comes later but we've seen we but we get some dialogue and some scenes from the hotel even though they're literally just right outside uh you know the quarantine zone that's not supposed to come this quick but they're making changes they're like expediting certain things Apparently, you know, they're not going to travel to every, every, every single area that we did in, in the game, in the sequence that, that we did it. Right. So, yeah, the hotel, the abandoned building and the whole museum scene is kind of mixed together. And it was a little bit confusing, um, you know, when you first saw it. Um, but Ellie, of course, can't swim. I thought they were about to bring out a plank, you know, like they did in the video game. But that doesn't happen. Um, and I'm happy about that. Um and you could tell that Neil Druckmann directed this episode because I think there were some intentional Easter eggs, right? Such as like Joel and Tess going in their 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 backpack, you know, getting inventory. And it's like the same animation as the video game. There was also that that uh that that boost that that happens in a lot of naughty dog games where they boost, you know, they get they do the partner boost to get up on a high ledge. And it was and it was something else. That was kind of like an like an Easter egg that was like literally seemed like it was taken right out of um, taken right out the the game. I can't remember exactly what it is, but yeah, um, there were some things I was like, yo, that's very that's very video game like. <laughs> um, so, you know, they have some more conversations about, you know, infected uh ellie asked joel about some infected you know he tells her some live a few months some live 20 years you know bloaters are like 20 years old i think uh infected are like i mean i think uh clickers are like 10 years old or whatever um and we get to learn more about the tendrils so and you know the, the more we learn about the tendrils it's like it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like they're kind of using the tendrils as a device right because it, it's this underground network of of fungus roots, right? Long fibers connect them like a hive mind, essentially what I talked about in my uh in that previous video I did when we learned there was going to be no spores. So the tendrils are like a hive mind that connect the diff that connect the infected. The infected could be nowhere near, but if an but if tendrils are in the ground and they make contact with a with another um in, in infected, then the others become aware somewhere somewhere else. So they're literally like a hive mind that that connect them. Um, I'm not and I'm not mad at this this device because it, it seems like it, it's a situation where they're gonna use it to uh, when they need to lure hordes of infected um, 
to to an area for whatever reason they choose to it's like an easy button oh you need hordes you need he hordes at, at a certain area oh push the button so i i, I assume this is going to be um not this is not going to be the only time they use the tendrils it definitely won't be um anytime they need more hordes running in a certain direction they're that's what they're going to use um ellie also asked joel about you know tess tess joel and tess's relationship which he kind of like skips over he's not answering that and that's something I was curious about last week, uh, because the game the game doesn't really touch on anything about Joel's and Tess's relationship. There, it, it's it's their relationship is kind of questionable. It seems like it's like almost strictly just plutonic and 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 and, and like a working relationship. But it seems like there could have been more there at some point. Not sure, but um. They, they 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 hint towards a couple of things uh so fast forward we're at the we're at the museum now you know joel checks the roots outside of the museum um to make sure there's no tendrils alive in it but he said they're you know they're dried out so that's something you got to do now i wouldn't be mad if they introduced like tendrils maybe in the last of us part three i actually don't think that might be that i think that you can implement that in a gameplay manner that might be kind of cool uh so yeah he checks you know the roots outside of the uh the museum um and they're dry so they you know they go in and at this point by the way at this point joel has a has an assault rifle and some people like bring that up like what weapon he has because like they're like he shouldn't have that at this point this point in the show and i'm like i gotta realize they're not gonna go they're not going to have like weapon the same weapon progression as they do in the video games. That that doesn't there's no point in that. It doesn't make sense. Like, oh, he has to uh have the pistol. He has to have a pistol up until the point where he 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 gets to the uh, you know, the buildings uh this certain building. Oh, and then he gets the shotgun and then he gets the 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 hunting rifle. Like, no, that that doesn't there's no point in that in in a TV show. Um, so they go and they go in the museum, they see a body, it looks like it's been mauled by a clicker and it's, and it just becomes very tense, right? Everybody gets quiet. It's on, it's on edge because they're like, they're very, they're unsure because they don't hear anything. And you know, you know, the telltale sign of a clicker is that little clicking and barking noise, uh, that it does. And I was a little bit, I was, I, I found their, their reaction to a clicker. A, a, a clicker possibly and they heard the clicker sound outside um and I, and I found their their reaction to a clicker possibly being in the building very interesting right because they they and of course clickers are more dangerous than runners but their reaction to clickers i don't know almost made me feel like have y'all not in, encountered clickers that often because he he seemed real like Joel seem real bravado. They seem real like kind of cool and chill when it comes to dealing with runners. Um, but like when it came to clickers, they were like, oh, nah, <laughs> we not ready. Because he's the man who said, oh, I've killed a lot of them. So even though clickers are more dangerous than runners, I'm like, bro, if you killed a lot of them, like, OK, what's another what's another clicker? That's that's in my mind. So it, it seems to me like in this show, clickers are more rare than they are in in the game because you came across clickers some somewhat often often enough in the game right but this encounter just seemed extremely rare for for them based on their and based on how they reacted at least that's how how it came off to me um it doesn't seem like you run into clickers super often in this world it seems like runners might be like and, and uh, runners are definitely the vast majority because you need less time to be a runner. Uh, clickers take like a decade or whatever it is. But still, uh, you know, it's 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 been two decades. So I assume there should be a fair amount of, of clickers. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all what y'all thought about thought about their reaction. So, of course, they're in the museum now um, and they're moving through very quietly because they know a clickers around. Uh, and they 
come, they go upstairs and they come across one. They hear the the clicking and the barking sound. Like I said, the atmosphere is perfect. The, it, there's tense, it's edge of your seat type stuff. Um, and then you see the clicker and the sound design of the clicker is, is perfect, of course, because I mean, you, Neil Druckmann, they, they got all the resources uh, they need to make stuff like that perfect. Like, how could you get it wrong? Like, you have the, the dude who directed the, the damn game um, also helping helping with this show so that you have all the resources you need to get all the sound perfect. So the, the sound is is it was definitely uh, on point. I don't know how you could get that wrong. Um, and the clickers look, the clickers look great. And I believe they said they got super fans to play the clickers, like people who were like super fans of the games to who knew how to act and move like clickers to play these clickers. Um, and the design of them, you know, them, them, their, their heads being split open and all that, you know, it, all that, all that looked very detailed and, and great, and creepy and, um, it seems like they might have used some like practical um, props uh, with a little bit of CG, you know, in post processing or, or 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 whatever on the um on the clicker, on the clicker. So it, it looked it looked great. Didn't look too CG. Um, it looked very practical with maybe some uh, a few effects on it. Um, but they look great, right? And shout out to these super fans, like once again who who are apparently so obsessed with us uh, obsessed with the show they've studied the movement of, cl of clickers because clickers are very like they move very specifically and very twitchy um so it, it's pretty hard to get that just that mannerism down but shout out to them because it was it was really good um ellie makes a sound when the clicker gets kind of close by um because she's in shock She's in absolute shock when she actually sees it kind of up close and just that slight sound of her of her gasp, you know, sets off the clicker. And that and it feels like that in the game sometimes. Sometimes you'll you'll be around a clicker and you barely it feels like you barely move and the clicker knows you're there like god damn it. Um so yeah, she sets off the clicker and Joel start first of all this kind of pissed me off. Joel starts shooting at the body of the clicker. I'm like, "Joel, my man, you just said you've killed a lot of them. You know you got to aim for the head of a clicker even more so than a runner because the, the clickers are more durable and they have that, their their heads are now hardened uh, by the fungus. So you literally got to aim for the head and 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 especially that, that soft space in the middle uh, of, of the fungus where it splits because that's actually, you know, the weak spot. Um, as he as he eventually showed, but yeah, you gotta always aim for the head, um, you know, to shoot that hard in that them, them hard in spots. Um, so when he started shooting at the body, I was like, bro, what are you doing? And like, my, my man, you just wasting ammo. Like, you clearly ain't playing on grounded. He just wasting ammo. He's shooting at every, shooting at you know all willy nilly. Like he got just infinite ammo on. I'm like, their aim are kind of trash. Like, bro. Tess, there was a clicker coming directly at Tess. Like, it was a straight line. And she fired over there to the left. I was like, Tess, where is your aim at? Like, I, come on. I was like, that was horrible. Got to get your aim up. Um, and these clickers are more, are more agile, I realized, right? But even before that, you know what I never thought about? What I never thought about when, when playing the game is... How difficult it would be in real life to reload when you have a clicker around you. And that's something that they highlight and they show in this episode. That never occurred to me how difficult that would be. Once again, because they're the clickers are very sensitive to sound. So you reloading, of course, that's not implemented in the game because that would be a little that would be a little, a little bit too much for them to hear that. But in the show. Yes, they could possibly hear you reload. If you drop a if you drop a bullet on the floor, oh man, now I'm now I'm caught again. Now they know know where I'm at. So they kind of um they kind of showed that. And I, and I like that they 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 really showed that of how even even more of a pain clickers would be in, in real life. You can't do anything around around a clicker in real life. Um and yeah, so the clickers are more agile because 
after they after Joel, and by the way there was like a little reference to the, the one of the first last last of us trailers where joel is hiding behind uh this little case and the clickers to the left of him um that was like a an homage to like the first trailer scene i believe and so they kind of lose the they lose the the clickers and him and ellie meet back up and they're hiding and joel accidentally steps on a glass i think and the clicker hears it and the clicker jumps right over the table on top of joel and i'm like that's not something that clickers typically they're not very agile right in in the game um they cuz they move like they 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 move like they're uh like they got disabilities like they 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 moving on a bad leg like they're they're a little bit disabled they don't got uh they're not the most they're not they're they're not spry fellows they're not like spring chickens you get what i'm saying like they're not they're not beating nobody in a race in the game at least um but in this show they're just they're more lethal runners like in the game when they become clickers they lose some of their speed damn near it seems like they move some of their agil- agility and their mobility in this show it doesn't seem like they, they've lost any mobility or range of motion or nothing like that that thing jumped right over the table on top of joel i'm like oh these that was a little bit World War Z ish, you know. With them World War Zs, them them joint them them things run run like four twos. Them things be sprint. Um, so I, I that was kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, these things are are definitely more just more lethal runners. That's that's what they are in the show. Um, Tess uses the melee weapon um, against this this thing and one of these things and hits it right in the head and it breaks. She should have had. You know, she should have had that reinforced weapon, you know, so it wouldn't have broke on her and she would have got that one that one hit kill. Um, and, you know, Joel eventually puts down uh, one of eventually puts down one of these things after wasting uh, a whole lot of ammo. Um, Ellie gets bit. And I like that they they allowed Ellie to get bit just, you know, this just so they can show how much of an advantage she has in the, in these situations. And that was also to show Joel like, yo, this. Bro, she's been bitten twice. That didn't happen in the game, but this is just to convince Joel because he's not convinced that she's actually immune. And as we know, as we know, Tess gets in- infected, so she can compare. Like, bro, this, this is she's already recovered from this this bite. Nothing's happening. Look at my bite. I just got bit. This is real, bro. Um, so they get to um they get to their destination where they're supposed to meet up. Uh, it was with the fireflies, right? Yeah, meet up with some fireflies. Um, but unfortunately, they're dead. One of them got infected, so they all ended up killing each other, um, which we know is different from the game um, because in the game, uh, what? God, God damn it, what happened in the game? In the game, they get to the building, and uh, and of course, yeah, what they... was there, Was there anybody dead in the building? It's crazy. I beat this damn game so much, but there's still stuff I forget. But essentially, but essentially, Fedra um, is is running, is chasing them down, and I don't think there there were any dead bodies when they first got in there, right? So yeah, they were getting chased by Fedra, and Tess is infected, and um, you know she tells Joel, you know, take Ellie and everything like that, and she's gonna stay and go down in a blaze of glory. Um, standing up to Fedra because she's going to die anyway. And she said, she says she doesn't want to turn into one of those things. So that's how, how she chose to go out. Um, Tessa's death is very different here. So after they figure out she's infected, Joel and Ellie, she, she tells Joel and Ellie to, to, you know, to go. Um, it's the grand reveal that she's infected. And she brings up, uh, Bill and Frank before before uh, Joel and, and and Ellie actually leaves, right? Which is very which is also very different from the game. Tess never brought up uh, Bill and Frank. We don't even know if she actually. Well, no, no, she she did know B- Bill. It, well, she did know Bill. We we know she knew of Bill, right? Frank is none of nobody's aware of Frank because Frank is is a, is essentially Bill's dead ex lover or whatever. Um, so they weren't aware of him, but they but they they knew Bill. 
Um, and Bill is somebody that that uh, Joel chose to go to for help, you know, in, in, in the game. Um, but that was never something that Tess, uh, that Tess brought up. So that was a little bit different. Um, so anyway, so after that, the the tendrils some summon the uh, summon the runners that were outside because they saw the runners in the in the distance when they were on the roof just laying there and that was a that was a sight to behold right and all these runners start running towards running into the building right and, and here's something that that was a little bit strange and I was talking to some people on Twitter about this the, for, it was very it was very odd because the the, the runners were running right past uh, Tess. And some people were saying it's because she was already infected. But I'm like, in the game, I'm trying to think of situations in a game. I don't think someone being infected has ever stopped the infected from attacking them. I don't think that stops them from attacking them. I think once you turn, then infected don't go after other actually you know fully turned infected but if you've been bit i don't i don't think that really like does any i don't think they suddenly lose interest in you i don't think that happens but i, I can't like i'm trying to remember like at this moment if there's any anything in the game that disproves that or or proves that and i and i gotta go back and like look at certain scenes and, and think about it but i don't think just because you you, you get bit that runners and in the infected just have no interest in you i don't think that's the way it works because e because even with that case okay why did this one singular infected walk up to tess and decide to give her the the kiss of death by and and this scene always makes me itch anytime they bring out them, them tendrils and them and and the fungus it always makes me makes me itch um but he and i think this death with tess this this death by having this one infected spread its tendrils through her mouth was more for dramatic flair but I and I thought it was cool and disgusting and gross and it was good for the show uh rather than her just getting shot down by Fedra agents I think it was good for it for that purpose of show and presentation but it was like it, it, it brought up some questions you know like okay once again why did the why did the runners run right past her also, it's not necessarily characteristic of Tess to just, yeah, we get she may have been in shock and fear, but it's not really a characteristic of Tess to just stand there and, and let it happen. And then there were a whole bunch of, there was gasoline on the, she, I think she had poured gasoline on the floor and there were grenades on the floor and all this stuff. And she had a lighter and, and, and we're like, why didn't she just pull the pin on the grenade there were like a bunch of grenades on the floor, floor why why didn't she just do that it would have had a chain reaction it would have had the same effect what is this what is this dramatic lighting uh, of this uh, you know of this lighter like what is that all about um so the first five minutes brought up were the last five minutes they weren't bad but it was questionable um yeah some things just you know a couple of things were just questionable i'm not gonna say they just flat out didn't make sense but i is like i gotta look into that because i'm not sure about y'all decision on um on, on it happening that way once again i don't see why tess would just stand there and, and let it happen um i i i feel like based on the game okay she would still be shooting as many of these things as possible and just go out once again, like in, it may not be a blaze of glory from the Fedra agents, but I guess it should have been a blaze of glory from, you know, um, with stopping these runners. But I, once again, I think they just did that to like for gross factor and um, to, uh, you know, for for presentation of a, of a TV show. So, yeah. Let me know what y'all think about that, that scene and, and that ending. Um, I, I do like that it pointed out that there's a there's a different way that the infected infect, you know, and, and it, it kind of reminded me of a there was a different show. I can't remember what it is. It was a different show or movie where uh, it might it might have been zombies or aliens uh, where they 
essentially infect or mind control people through the same method by de depositing something down their throat. That sounds nuts, by the way. No pun intended. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's an interesting, different method of delivery rather than just bites. Uh, so good, good second episode. Very, like I said, it was it was a good second episode. Last five minutes, questionable. Let me know what y'all what y'all thought about that. And uh, yeah, I, it the like I said, the the best parts of this show, at least for people who are gamers, I I think are definitely the beginning. I look, I'm now I'm looking forward to the beginning of every episode. If every assuming every one of these episodes actually has. Uh, a scene like that where they're providing more exposition and lore and background. Now, now I need y'all to do that for for all nine episodes. You have to, you know. I need I need that. Um. So yeah, that's that's my re my review um of the second episode. Um, show show show's definitely good. Uh, like I said, I do feel like some things are a bit rushed. Uh, and they're like cutting some parts out and con and you know connecting some parts to just to include it earlier um i do feel like i do feel like tess dying in the second episode feels sooner than what the equivalent was to how soon she died in the game you know what i'm saying like it just felt sooner in the show than it did in the game um so, you know, I don't know. But and that's once again, because they cut out certain things, even from episode one um, and cut out more things in episode two um, that weren't really relevant or, you know, that were just essentially just gameplay purposes. So that's my review. I enjoyed episode episode two. Um, this this episode with Bill and Frank, episode three, that's 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 going to be a crazy one, too. So, yeah, let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Uh, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, um, follow me on Twitter if you're not, and um, I'm going to be real, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a lot of post-editing, post because like in the first episode, I did a lot of, uh, you know, putting images and, 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 and clips from the episode and stuff like that for visual aids, but that stuff takes time, and I'm going to be real with y'all, I just want to, I just want to upload this joint, so you, let, let me know if, if those visual you know, aids are a big deal to y'all if y'all really like them in the video. Um, Cause I don't think I'm gonna do it in this one, especially, you know, coming home and recording and then having to edit after when I hate editing in the first place. But anyway, I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out of here, peace.